Anne Shawe and Frank Theron Foundation research team. So in research team, we do research on the next generation Ethereum protocols. And we also do some proof of concept to verify our ideas. So uh, today this is a lightning talk and it will be more about the implementation part. So first, let's uh, quick recap that uh, now you may already know that from Vitalik's talk that uh, Casper, Sharding, and Random Beacon Chain, they are all together right now. And we, I prefer to call it Serenity. And um, now this circle is our current world, is Ethereum 1.0 and the proof of work chain. And the Serenity is quite different but it's still an uh, extension of the Ethereum 1.0. And we will have those fantastic future, like the full proof of stake, a good random number generator, and uh, the blockchain sharding for scalability problem. And uh, we will have a whole new brand, a brand new beacon chain, and many shard chains in this ecosystem to realize it. So um, if we abstract the different chains into, we can make it into three levels. So the, if I'm a user on, of the proof of work chain, I can make a deposit on the contract on the uh, POW chain. And I, say, I can say that, hey, I want to um, deposit that my 32 Ether, and I want to be one of the validators. And the validators is a, a long list of the validators, and those validators will be uh, pseudo randomly shoveled into many groups. So we call that this process the community shoveling. So um, the mention is still here, the POW mention is still here, and the block is proposed. But uh, when we do the beacon chain block proposed, the beacon chain block will point to, a re uh, will refer make a reference that point to the proof of work chain. And um, there will be a committee that they will be assigned and be able to verify and attest a beacon block. So this committee, they have to uh, send their votes them to, ver to say, hey, yes, this block is valid. And then we call this process the attestation. So um, in the shard chain, it is similar. The shard chain, there will also be a committee that will be assigned to validate some specific shard block. And the shard block, um, the validator will have to verify this block and make their attestation. So um, the following process is similar, just well, propose a block and reference it. And notice that the beacon chain block and shard block can be faster than the proof of work chain. So um, that's the simple high level overview of this system. And I want, now I'll focus on, we want, um, we'll talk about the client side. So I think Kai is the heart of Ethereum right now. Um, we not, we're, ha we're happy to have many devs and teams that are working on this system. And I want to shout out their name here. We have um, Harmony, Lighthouse, Lowstar, Nimbus, Pantheon, Prism, and uh, Parity Substract Transfer, and Trinity. We have eight active uh, clients right now. <laughs> and now our research team and all these clients, their researchers develops. We are working on the uh, open source um, GitHub repository, and it's a community work, and everyone can get, uh, make an issue and, put, and give some input on here. And I also want to shout out to Danny Ryan and he, um, he organized the by weekly community call. And so there are some ongoing discussion on the by weekly call. Thank you, Danny. 
<laughs> and and all these uh, guys, they are all open source now. I think they are. <laughs> um, with this um, a strong community, we can have a chance to redesign the ideal blockchain system. So now let's some example that there are some question issues that we are working on. Uh, for example, that uh, because um, there are many roads on the internet for the proof of stake system, because uh, everybody literally have to broadcast their individual uh, votes to say, hey, this block is valid. Or, and, and if we want to have um, like thousands of shots in the system, uh, the traffic is it's not good for network traffic. So how to, make, uh, how to build an efficient signature aggregation protocol or in the cryptography um, thinking? That's a problem. And also, we have a chance to change the ILP data serialization into something um, more efficient or simpler. And for the network side, uh, um, there's a problem is that because for in the, I say that the, the validator will be randomly shoveled to assign, or assign, will be assigned to validate some specific shots in a specific time slot, which means that uh, when the, when the, sh the validator, they will, they will be asked to, hey, I, I have to validate, validate the big shot block like in 10 minutes, for example. Then they, it's um, easy in protocol, but if we say that like, in the network layer, they have to move their peers' network into different network. So it will cause a lot of um, connection time to do the peer discovery and thinking. So we need to redesign a new topology and a new peer management system to uh, deal with it. So um, our current idea is that we can use the like, P2P gossip shop um, channels to gossip channels to uh, like assign a shot for some specific channels. Uh, in that way, we can reduce the connection overhead. Okay. And um, I'd like to spend some time for the Python implementation. So because uh, we have a beacon chain reference that, uh, on GitHub that reflects the current spec, but now we also want to port it in, uh, to the production environment because we want to make a Testnet in Python, yay. <laughs> yeah, <thank you. laughs> and, and Trinity is the Ethereum 1.0 client with, uh, built with Python, uh, led by Pipe Mariam and his, and his team, the Snake Chambers. And it's open source now, and you can check their uh, website and link to the repository. And if we see the architecture layer by layer, um, there will be network layer and the state extrusion layer, like beacon chain, state machine, it's different it's from EVN, it's quite simple. And for the shot, we will have uh, like EWASN in this system and different chains and uh, different client roles because we now we are using the validator, not the miner. And the last, uh, I want to encourage you to check out those resources um, if you want to participate more. And I think we are doing something really cool here. And thank you for community contribution. And thank you for your listening. <laughs> and uh, next, Raul from Prismatic Lab, he will give you a talk about um, their golden implementation. Thank you. All right. Um, wow. So thank you, Xiaowei, for the amazing presentation. I think uh, it's been so incredible how ever since kind of the Ethereum sharding efforts first spun up, 
there was essentially nobody working on this. Uh, there were a few reference implementation, a, a few reference uh, specs out there, a few blog posts. Uh, but in the span of less than a year, uh, there have been more than eight teams just aggregating, coming together, and uh, putting together something that will work in production uh, as the next iteration of our platform. So today, I will be talking about implementing Prism, which is our Go client for Ethereum 2.0. And I just want to give a little bit of a background on kind of who we are. Uh, so my name is Raul, and I am the co-founder of Prismatic Labs. So we are an independent team of developers that aggregated to build an implementation for sharding, Casper, and a general upgrade to the Ethereum network. There is no token, uh, there is no, there's no pre-sale, there's nothing of that sort. We just want to create a public good. We understand how powerful this would be for everyone to use. And we want to create something that is production grade uh, using the best uh, software engineering practices to build a client like this. So. <laughs> So why exactly did we start, and how exactly does this happen? So we fast forward kind of, well, go back uh, to the late 2017, where Vitalik had a basic sharding FAQ, explaining the possibility of having a parallelizable world computer. This was the start of kind of a new initiative. There were, it was very, very high level in the sense that it didn't really go into much detail of how this would work, uh, you know, like how, how feasible would this be from an implementation perspective. And essentially, a bunch, of, a bunch of blockchain developers like me and my team were you know, scouring Gitter, uh, going through GitHub issues, trying to get a grasp if like, this is viable or not. So we started asking ourselves, who is working on this? Who wants to work on this and just join us on an implementation effort? So we put together a call on Reddit, uh, and our whole team assembled organically through the internet. And actually, uh, this DEF CON uh, marks the first time all of us actually meet in person. So it's been an amazing, uh, amazing time. Yeah. So what does it mean to work on F2.0? Working on F2.0 means, at a very high level, operating under constraints. And we have to understand that we have a currently functioning you know, main chain client that runs a proof of work chain right now, where there are real people with invested ap applications, uh, biddlers, as we've seen, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of initiatives to kind of keep this going and make it, into, uh, you know, make it as robust as possible so we can get to our goal of achieving a world computer. The problem is that. When upgrading the system, this isn't exactly going to be a hard fork. So what this means is that Ethereum 2.0, as Xiaowei explained, is going to be a side chain of sorts. It's going to be basically a parallel chain uh, that is then pegged to the proof of work chain as a way to create a full Casper FFG enabled proof of stake chain. Um, and what this means is that we must have to be very, very careful with our crypto economic design, um, how we onboard people into the system, and how we can get the same level of scale uh, of uh, usability uh, and a much, much larger level of throughput. So what is the road so far? Ever since we started in around January of 2018, uh, we initially started doing a bi-weekly development update. We wanted to be as transparent as possible about these efforts. We understand that given the spec is so kind of young, uh, we need as much discussion around some of these problems. We need people criticizing, we need people coming in and being like, you guys should not do it this way, you should try this way instead. Uh, aside from that, we've been big fans of having extensive onboarding documentation. So we've been able to onboard a lot of contributors that have not been as familiar with Ethereum 2.0 to be able to come in and just uh, build out parts of our implementation. We've been leveraging Gitcoin extensively. So thank you, Vivek, for this amazing tool. Um, it's, an, it's an incredible tool. Every time we make a bounty, we get tons of people just coming in and flocking to it. Um, and it's just been a great experience just onboarding people into the community. I think that's, uh, that's the way to go. Aside from that, we've also been doing bi-weekly development updates. So we've been frequently posting about everything we do. And on October 3rd, we released our very first uh, POC of the current Beacon Chain Shasper uh, spec. Um, and yeah. <laughs> cool. So what does it mean to create an entirely new system? It means that we have the opportunity to make better and more robust design choices. So in that sense, you know, we've been like Ethereum, as uh, kind of Vitalik puts it, was kind of a scrappy attempt to build a world, com a world computer, and F2.0 will actually be the world computer. So under this set of constraints, we have to consider, you know, how will the underlying tech stack uh, improve this efficiency and reduce as much overhead as possible so that we can maximize the throughput that we get from the system as well as the usability. So one of the things that we've been using is uh, there's a lot of kind of a lot of discussions around all the F2.0 teams using libp2p, 
which is a very popular networking library maintained by Protocol Labs. Aside from that, uh, we've been using Google's popular uh, gRPC framework for communication between processes. So we want the friction to be as little as possible. We want nodes to be able to just work. You can spin up a node, you can communicate, you can run a validator client. You don't need to think about it. And in our eyes, what we see as scalability of a blockchain is truly having a base layer that does its job good enough so that applications don't even need to consider it. Aside from that, we picked Go as our tool. Uh, Go is an incredible language for blockchains in particular, where you have so many concurrent processes. It's very concise. And what's really great about Go is that you know, when we're collaborating as a team, it feels like almost every file has been written by the same person or the same group of people because it's so strict in how it does things. Um, aside from that, it's very batteries included. So it, pre it prefers simplicity over magic. We have a lot of other languages uh, that just seem you know, like they're, written, they're coming from some arcane alien knowledge. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, crazy kind of constructs in there. Uh, however, with Go, we have the simplicity that everyone that wants to contribute to a blockchain project, they basically can just come in, they'll understand what's going on in the code. All they need to understand is to read more about the context, read our documentation, and we'll always gladly onboard them. So we, uh, we believe in the power of Geth. Geth has been, is, a, is an incredible project that's been battle tested. It's gone through a lot of upgrades. And even then, like, it maintains uh, you know, the robustness and flexibility of a language as great as Go. So exactly what does Prism encompass as a client for you guys? Uh, we are careful to design this knowing that a lot of people in this room will probably be using this client as Ethereum 2.0 launches. And we want to be, ensure a great developer experience as well as great user-facing piece of software. So if you guys check out our repo, uh, you know, fully open, always welcome. So it's Prismatic Labs uh, slash Prism. Uh, we've put a lot of work together on implementing the beacon chain, making sure we have up-to-date uh, documentation on how this works, uh, have parity with the spec. One of the biggest things is that we're very much, we aim to be very much on the bleeding edge. The thing about the Ethereum 2.0 spec is that it's very much uh, still in the works. So there are a lot of core functionality and logistics about how validators will work that are still kind of being designed. A lot of R&D efforts specifically around the cryptography behind this. And we've been taking, we've been a little bit more, uh, you know, we've been taking a little bit more risks in implementing something further ahead. So we've been careful with, you know, kind of how we design the system, what architecture we pick, uh, how users will interact with this. And what exactly are the roles of the, interact, the people interacting in Ethereum 2.0? So in F2.0, we have an entity called the Beacon node, and we also have validator clients. So why establish this separation, right? So a Beacon node essentially serves as like the source of randomness uh, for Ethereum 2.0. It processes kind of information that is aggregated across shards. It processes the votes from validators on shards. And it also determines the Casper FFG rewards and penalties to people involved. So if you guys imagine running a current uh, Geth node or a parity node, in the future, that's going to be what we call running a beacon node. Aside from that, we have an abstraction of a validator client, which is essentially like a wrapper um, that can help you, you know, kind of interact with your private keys. However, you can store your private keys elsewhere, such as in a hardware wallet or your other preferred methods. Um, this validator client will actually be shuffled by the beacon node into shards. And it's going to be your main interface as a user into you know, participating and securing the Ethereum network for the future. Right? And specifically, everyone needs uh, 32 ETH to participate. So this is a number you can't go higher or lower at the moment. And what would this look like kind of from a software architecture perspective? So we have a beacon node that serves as a single source of truth for kind of shard assignments, state transitions, and everything that happens in Net 2.0. Aside from that, you have your little validator client which is your user-facing piece of software. So one thing we can imagine is that a beacon node can be something hosted by a provider like Infura. Uh, you can run your own beacon node, for example. Uh, staking pool providers can run a bunch of beacon nodes. So ideally, you know, these, these machines are not going to be as resource intensive as the ones that we have today. However, like, as a user, we want to make it also so you can run your own beacon node. Validator clients can be run anywhere. And these are very lightweight pieces of software. Ideally, we might even abstract it even more, such that validators, all they need to do is really manage private keys. And that can be done through, a, through, a, you know, through your hardware wallet and have a little interface for you to do that. Aside from that, in the system, we also contain the idea of shards. And one question we get a lot is, I want to run multiple validators. How can I do that? Say you're, uh, you're a company, uh, you know, we, 
uh, as an example, I want to give a shout out to Rocket Pool. These guys are awesome. They're working on kind of a staking architecture uh, for people to get involved, even if you don't have the 32 ETH. So what would that look like? One of the things that we don't want to happen is this, right? So we don't want you to have to spin up a single client every single time you, you want to stake 32 ETH, you want to participate in the network. So one of the, one of the things we've gotten around is actually creating a multi-tenant cl validator client architecture. So in the sense that like validator assignments are live streamed for a subset of uh, public keys. So for example, I'm running a validator client on my laptop or my computer at home. Um, I manage uh, 10 public keys on there. I can send an API request to my beacon node for the assignments for those 10 public keys, and I get a stream telling me exactly when I need to do my job. I don't need to do anything. I just have one machine. I trust it, uh, and things get done. So essentially, we also, this also allows for validator as a service sort of opportunities. At Prism, we're going to be shipping our own in-house validator client that you guys can use. But it should be a very simple piece of software uh, that any other person can create as well, as long as it conforms to the Beacon Node Ethereum 2.0 API, right? And like I said, these are very lightweight, can be spun on all types of devices. So I can even imagine having your phone as, uh, as the entity that you know, stores private keys and can help with signing uh, the transactions required. So what does a Beacon Chain kind of public API look like? And one of the things that we want to do is we want to improve upon the current system, which currently uses JSON RPC. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that here. It includes a lot, of, a lot of issues, a lot of issues with standardization. And it's not something that uh, I think we believe is robust enough uh, for Ethereum 2.0. So instead, we're going with protocol buffers. And protocol buffers give you a lot of benefits. So as an example, uh, say we have two nodes communicating with each other, right? Uh, protocol buffers provide this bi-directionality of essentially you know, having a good standard for a public API, allowing nodes to know exactly what to expect, and allow them to interact with each other in a way that we know will work, even cross clients. Whereas with JSON, for example, every client needs to write kind of their own way of doing things. Uh, you're into a situation where like, on the sender end, I'm really happy with what I'm sending, uh, the recipient has no idea. Right? Uh, as of today, uh, a lot of the current Ethereum clients, they don't even implement all the Web3 endpoint methods that the other clients do. That's something that we're going to actively try to avoid in Net 2.0. So just to give you guys an example of gRPC connection metrics. Uh, so gRPC is kind of like a framework put together by Google for this uh, remote procedure call uh, service optimization. And currently, you know, when you use JSON RPC, um, you get around you know, almost a 10 order, uh, which in reality is about like a six, uh, you know, a six times order of throughput uh, compared to JSON RPC when you're seeing uh, protobus. Why is this? Uh, in particular, you know, why is this important? Well, we want to make sure, like I said, we want to reduce the mu as much friction as possible between nodes using F2.0 to make it so that you don't need to worry about this as a user. You don't need to worry about like, the, the bottlenecks that you'll obtain from this. Aside from that, here are some utilities that we'll provide in our client for you guys to use, and that are going to be basically like you know, public packages that can be imported across other projects. So if you guys went to Justin's Drake, uh, Justin Drake's uh, randomness talk for F2.0, uh, we're going to be leveraging the power of uh, ASIC's, uh, ASIC rigs to create a verifiable delay function source of randomness for Ethereum 2.0. So it's really cool because uh, you can actually have a public API where you can query uh, the randomness, uh, like unbiasable, strong randomness from Ethereum 2.0 nodes that you can use in your applications. Um, we're going to have a very robust key value store using Bolt DB, which is a write optimized database, specifically, you know, very well, very well created for blockchains, as well as a signature aggregation library using BLS. So the cool thing is that in previous iterations of uh, kind of the Ethereum uh, 2.0 spec. There are a lot of uh, questions around how can we do efficient signature aggregation. Uh, we have a lot of validators voting on blocks. How can we get them basically doing their job in a way that we don't have to worry about the bottleneck of uh, verification on chain? So in this case, uh, we get the wonderful uh, BLS uh, signature aggregation tool. Aside from that, uh, the beacon node serves as a source of shard shuffling and cross shard communication. So on the, on the beacon chain uh, spec right now that Xiaowei pointed out in the official Ethereum repo, uh, there is essentially not enough mention about cross shard communication, but it's a very active area of research. Uh, but the beacon nodes uh, finality and the way committees are handled gives us a strong way to kind of begin on an approach towards that. Another thing is we're going to be building a common client uh, testing framework. So we want to make it so that we have a very simple format in YAML where we can specify like, hey, you know, I want, I want, to, I want to specify a test for a fork choice in Ethereum 2.0. 
I want to specify what happened with uh, signature aggregation. I want to know exactly you know, like what, what this would look like, what the result would be, and have a comprehensive test suite so that even if people are not familiar with our client um, and are coming from other client teams, they can come in and test things robustly end to end. So we did a POC um, kind of uh, early October in which we essentially had our beacon node on the left. And on the right hand side, you guys can see validator clients uh, that are connected, receiving streams of uh, gRPC responses, getting shuffled into shards, and performing the responsibility of basically attesting and proposing to shard blocks. And uh, you know, it was just really interesting to see how this implementation efforts give us a really good idea of kind of where the spec is. A lot of the specification right now is mostly like, oh, we should do block processing, we should do fork chokes. Uh, but nobody really tells you, like, OK, where should this live? Um, who should be doing this? How should validator clients interact? So by being a very bleeding edge focused implementation team, we get to answer a lot of these questions ourselves and kind of come up with uh, designs that would make sense in light of the spec and oftentimes come up and be like, hey, there might be a bug in the spec. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's, I think, been really, a really amazing experience working with the Ethereum research team on this. So what are the next steps for us at Prismatic Labs? There's still a lot of work to do on the beacon chain spec. Part of it is due to research. But one of the things I like to say is that the research at this point is, uh, is most of the core, core uh, kind of items will remain the same. What's really lacking is kind of logistics around exactly validator client interactions, how that's going to work and such. Um, working on benchmarks and metering extensively for our applications. So we want to make sure we understand if our signature aggregation is done properly, uh, you know, how, how many validator clients can we realistically have attached as gRPC processes, um, as well as work on shard P2P, which is a very big kind of umbrella term. Right? So our next major milestone is something that I'm really happy to kind of announce. Uh, so we will be doing a testnet cluster of beacon nodes and validators. And that's something that you know, we, we aim to do with the other client implementation teams as well. Uh, but we want to make it so we have a very simple system where you guys can obtain faucet ETH, uh, can basically deposit your ETH to become validators, get onboarded as validators into the beacon chain kind of 2.0, and can start performing your responsibility. And uh, that is, it's, it's a very exciting kind of prospect. Um, and we really hope that you know, people will leverage PRISM to the best of their ability and understand all the tools that we have to offer. Um, and of course, you know, this is a constant you know, work in progress. Uh, we're constantly iterating on this. Uh, and we'll have a lot more for you guys in the coming months. So stay tuned, uh, stay tuned for this. Yeah, so some learning resources. Um, there's a lot of information out there if you guys look up F2.0, now called Serenity. Um, so there's an F2.0 devs handbook if you guys want to learn more about this. We have the spec, we have a repo, we have our bi-weekly kind of implementer calls that are kind of in parallel with the core devs calls. Um, and overall, all of that is out there. I mean, uh, F2.0 went from being something that might happen, maybe it could be there, maybe it's feasible to being like, it's going to happen, and we're all going to do it. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Let's do some questions. Yeah. Cool. So I have a bit of time for questions. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Hi, um, my name is Josh. I just hey. had a quick question. Yeah. You said ETH 2.0 and sharding and beacon chains are going to run parallel with proof of work chain. Is that true? Yeah, so essentially 2.0 is going to be a new chain, a new system for proof of stake, Casper FFG, um, where you have the, the proof of work chain uh, running in parallel with it. Uh, the, way, the reason we do this is so that we make it easier for people to deposit ETH as a one way deposit into the 2.0 chain. Um, so we want to leverage the fact that like people have current ETH, they want to leverage that to become validators. So that's kind of why we're kind of synchronizing the two at the moment. Okay. Do you foresee um, the proof of work chain being deprecated right now? Yes, I foresee that. So the way we're going to do that is probably going to migrate the entire state uh, of the current proof of work chain into a contract on a shard in the future. Um, in the meantime, that still hasn't really been designed. Uh, but yeah, we would still keep the same state. But in the future, ideally, we want proof of work to be deprecated over time. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, 
Um, two questions. First, uh, are you in, uh, does, does this client, Prism client, intend to deprecate Geth? Or is it something? That's a good question. Um, I think the Geth team has been really busy right now with all the hard fork uh, situation and testing and making sure everything is up to par. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what their plans are moving forward. Um, but yeah, I mean, they have so much experience in Go uh, that, you know, we'd love for them to get involved as well. Um, I'll try to be more specific. Will Geth be proof of work like Ethereum 1, or will, do they intend to implement 2.0 serenity? Yeah, I am not sure, actually. Okay. Sorry. Okay, and the second question, sorry, um, is uh, are you funded by con Consensus, Ethereum Foundation, yes, anything, uh, or are you so inter are entirely voluntary? Yeah, we received funding from Aragon Nest. We received a, a major grant from the Ethereum Foundation of $500,000 in the latest wave. So it was super nice. Thank you, EF. Uh, we received ECF uh, and uh, OneChain Blockchain Labs, a few other organizations. Uh, but it's all been grants. We haven't taken any equity. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not kind You're of full time. Business. You're working full time, the team. Yeah, on this. Okay, great, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So we have one more question. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi. Can you talk more about running a validator client on a smartphone? Do you know sure. any particular work? Sure. Ideally, like, um, if it's going to run on a smartphone, it'll probably just be like the private key kind of signing functionality of the validator client. We still haven't designed exactly like what it would look like on mobile um, because there are still things to be done on the spec. But ideally, like, yes, like, we want to make it as lightweight as possible if you're running it on your phone. Um, and obviously, phones have like uh, availability assumptions. Like, you're, you know, you might not always have connection. We want to make sure that you're prepared for that and have some way to protect you against those things. Um, so there are some compromises for running on the phone, um, but there hasn't been designed yet. So I can't give a strong answer to that. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.